So today we have Professor Mulud Madun. Uh, he has worked in various fields of knowledge. Uh, and uh, he is going to talk to us about uh, the EPIC uh, and how it has uh, evolved and its usages, etc., from various cultural points of views. It's not just unilateral cultural point of view, but, but <clears throat> the notion of transculturality will always be continuously uh, an important point in understanding EPIC, and this is just one point of view which he is going to present. Professor Malud Mudun is primarily a <coughs> professor and a scholar in the field of management studies. Uh, he has, uh, for years, decades, uh, spent field in various uh, top institutions in the world, and his own uh, life is a very important uh, example for us in terms of uh, uh, cultural spaces being transgressed if I may use the word, the transgression with amalgamation in such a way that all the places are actually part of one. That is part of our <coughs> consciousness where everything becomes one. Uh, the unity and of course all that gets uh, represented in the world. Just to mention a few that professor belongs to originally a very historical uh, um, uh, tribe which is well known in various ways uh, that is uh, the kind of, we know it as Berber tribe. So if you, when you study these epics, that Berber tribe is also very important because a professor belongs to Algeria originally and then from that part of Algeria when there is Berber tribe. So if you read about it, you will find the various, again, cultural notions getting amalgamated and transgressed from one part to the other part and the troubled relationship as well as the affections that is coming out of the troubled relationship. And then from there uh, <coughs> to the French society and then having worked in various European countries and various other countries of the world, including in, in India. In India also he has worked in the several top institutions. Uh, so for this, sir, I welcome you. It is my pleasure. There is a very small gift from the university which our own research scholars are going to present. So, uh, with this official welcome here, sir, uh, now I request you kindly to take us to the intellectual journey, which we have been waiting for several weeks. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, I'm very happy to be here, really. So, I have been visiting India for many years, but. Uh, it's shameful, I should not say that, but my first visit to Patna <laughs> and Bihar, and Bihar. Why, I don't know. All the times attracted, but fortunately I'm here today. And there are plenty of things to see. And, uh, I was in different South Indian, North, even India. I was to Sikkim and uh, different places. What Bihar? I don't know. Orissa, I was in Orissa, just nearby. <laughs> anyway, so I'm very, very happy to be here. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Professor Sushan, because, you know, thanks to you, uh, I am correcting one big mistake in my life to not have visit, <laughs> to visit Bihar. But still, I think I really, I thank you so much because, you know, thank you to our visit, invited me to visit, to come here and to interact with students. And uh, I am also very happy to meet, you know, uh, this, uh, this is an example of India, you know, in the classroom, diversity, you know diversity. India is a diverse country and we have a very diverse, all the world is sitting in this place. And I am also from other, you know, other planet also. So I'm very, very happy to be here. So, okay, we can discuss, you know, about, you know, what I have been doing, you know, different uh, things, you know. But uh, uh, today I'd like to share with you some uh, of the ideas I have developed. So, so today I didn't bring my example, but today, tomorrow I will have uh, an example of the book. We have just written a book with these people. Yeah. Hmm? 
like some. So with ASEC, because I'm still a researcher with ASEC. ASEC Paris is very famous for <laughs> business management studies. Business management studies. So I spent 25 years in Marseille, southeast of Marseille. So and also with I am Trichy, I am indoor, I was in this and so. Now I am with the, uh, this ASEC. So ASEC is a business school, you know, <coughs> economics and business, very famous, worldwide, like uh, competing with Harvard, with this kind of big business, like INSEAD. But uh, you know, I joined uh, ESEC for a very simple reason. So ESEC also, is also developed this chair called Chair of Transformation and Innovation. La chair des innovations et des transformations. Transformation and innovation chair. I said, you know, what are you, I discussed with the friend, two friends of mine, they are actually there. So what are you doing in this chair? They said, we are, uh, we are developing some kind of uh, processes of transforming, changing organizations, societies, and why not the world? Because the world is changing, you know? And we are trying to, to build our model from different perspective, different culture. And at that time I was attending one uh, meeting there and uh, one guy was talking about uh, China. So they found a book, I mean, this book is known, the book of metamorphosis. Le livre des metamorphoses, des transformations, les Chinois. C'est un des premiers, one of the first book in transformation written, was written by a Chinese, it was in uh, the fifth century, so before uh, this uh, era. And it was focused, very interesting book, but very small book, but very, very, so then I was discussing with him, said, you know, uh, we also, we in India, we have some also good example of how to transform the societies, cultures, and why not? It can help organization to implement some, some kind of a wise and effective transformation. I said, okay, go ahead. So I have written this book. So tomorrow I'll show you because I have one copy with me here. The book, the title of the book is, so it's still in French. Maybe you can, you can translate it in Hindi and uh, so. Transformer, transforming, transformer sans rompre, without, uh, without, uh, uh, sans rompre means without breaking, et sans, sans rompre et sans exclure. Transforming without excluding and without breaking. What kind of things you can learn from India? Yeah, that's, so in English it can be translated into inclusive and continuous transformation. Why this title? This title, I know, I was very, I'm very happy because I found it. <laughs> title is important, yeah. So why? Because if you look at what, what happened, and what is still happening in the Western model, the Western culture. Transformation is very, very important topic today. Very. You can now find in many organizations in France, big, big organizations like, uh, like uh, uh, EDF, electricity, like uh, banks, like General, uh, Société Générale, uh, Bank of Paris, uh, big uh, like Areva, nuclear. So they have included today in their own organization a structure called Department of Transformation. So this Department of Transformation is reporting to the CEO, only the CEO, and he is taking all kinds of initiatives to transform the organization, linking it with the society. So that's it. Welcome, bienvenue, comment allez-vous? So if you don't speak French, you cannot join. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you give me 100 rupees. <laughs> Internet split. <laughs> so they, they have included uh, now this uh, Department of Transformation. I think today, 90% of organizations, big companies you know, in, in France, at least in France, and in Europe, some Germans also are starting there. They have included Department of Transformation in any kind of things, in digit, how digitalization is being transforming, <coughs> you know, cultural transformation of organization, uh, people uh, behavior, everything is included. And this is the department which, which is taking care of that. 
and he is reporting only the, to the CEO. Reporting to the CEO means he cannot be influenced by any kind of uh, you know, other department, HR, finance, or something like that. So uh, if you look at uh, what happened and what's still happening in the West, so most of the transformations uh, uh, were uh, uh, implemented uh, breaking some old tradition and excluding. Because today, even today, there is one saying in France, in French, saying, on ne peut pas faire une omelette, we cannot make omelettes without <laughs> breaking the guys. So unfortunately, we have to change something in the organization, but we have to break. What does it mean break? It means some people will be suffering and we have to exclude some people because they are not fitting what we want to do in the organization, break it. And this kind of thing started very, I mean, at least in the Renaissance, yeah? Really, Renaissance also. So at that time, it's a French Revolution. French Revolution, do you know French Revolution? Yeah, which day? Very good, 1789, 1789, huge revolution, you know this, uh, chapter of human rights started there. Now it's written everywhere in the world. Universal, universal. But if you look at what happened, you know, conflict, uh, blood, uh, killing, and uh, you know, the revolution people at that time who took the Bastille, Bastille was a huge prison, but political prison for people who did agree or something like that, not for criminals. <laughs> you know, La Bastille, La Bastille. Still in France, like that. So they opened the door of the Bastille, they, they broke the doors of the Bastille, and then they freed all people there, political people. And, uh, and, uh, and to break, you know, with the past, the past was the kingdom and the, the, the roi, the roi, the king, uh, monarchy at that time, to, I mean, to, to break uh, once, uh, once for, I mean, once for, uh, for uh, forever, you know? So what they did? Do you know what they did, the revolutionaries? I mean, to, to break with the past, with the, the king, kingdom. So they were implementing it? Yes. They cut the yeah. hand they, they cut the hand on the Louis XVI. Yeah. Louis XVI, they cut, you know, the chafou. So this is the meaning of the transformation. We want to transform the society, but you know we cannot work with this past, you know, tradition, the, the kingdom, etc. So to show all people that we are breaking with the past, so we will cut, cut it. But this is this is the really the uh, good example, and uh, the revolution, the industrial revolution, started like that. So the societies was uh, uh, farmer based, agriculture based, then the. This uh, peasant and the farmer was supposed to be archaic, means old fashioned people and they are not effective, etc. So they have to shift to another order, another model of society, which was uh, um, designed uh, by, the, by the French Revolution, but also by the Industrial Revolution with the, the British and, the, and the, the leading at that time was the British and the French, mm -hmm. the La Revolution Industrielle, mm -hmm. the Industrial Revolution. So this is the thing. So uh, this is the way of the, uh, how the, the changing, the transformation was uh, being implemented, implemented. We have to break. Uh, sometimes, you know, can say, unfortunately, we have to break. We have to exclude people. We have to kill people who do not accept this change, who do not want to adapt to this new change. So we have to break with that, and we have to exclude. So this, you know, this, uh, during these two centuries, three centuries, it was like that was like that. Uh, obviously, it started earlier, but it, I mean, this, uh, uh, the, the, the 17th and the 18th century was the most important uh, century of this kind of transformation, change, radical change, radical change of the society, of the culture, of, and of the world, also, of the world. So you have to civilize the world. Now, broadly, now, if you, you shift from the society organization to the world, you have to civilize the world. So what we are doing, is universal, universal. It means that it should be by everyone, everywhere in the world. And unfortunately, what happened is that we have killed many people. 
to the Americans. The big criminal in the world are Americans. Yeah? Yeah? They killed all the natives. Yeah? The Spanish people, they killed all the Aztec, Amaya, etc. Mm. This uh, prestigious civilization uh, completely disappeared because of the Spanish. They came there, but these people are not civilized. We want to civilize you. If you don't want to be part of our civilization, so you will be excluded and killed. I mean, this is what happened. And then came the colonialism. I think what happened in India, I think we know. We can talk also about India, the history of India, the culture of India. The domination, you know, by the, the big things, you know. Uh, you know, because India, Indians were not supposed to be civilized enough. So you have to be civilized. What does it mean? You have to accept the dominant model of culture. If you don't want to accept that, then you have to be, I mean, is, either you pay the, this uh, tax, <laughs> tax, there is a tax, you have to pay because you became slave, you know, you became slave. Oh, killed, they killed people, many people killed with the culture, tradition, this, this. So the, this kind of things, okay, we can develop this, we can, we can go in depth, we can give all the details about what happened exactly in different, in different places in the world, but welcome. So, uh, but th this is the, the spirit of uh, uh, our book, you know, and then this book, you know, as I told you, uh, title we have given. Tomorrow I will, I will show you some, some uh, 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 the book I, we have written with two colleagues. So, changing, transforming, without breaking, the India of exclusion, which is inclusive, inclusive and continuous, and continuous transformation. Means, I think, you know, India can help, why India? I think you can tell me, you know, because there are many civilizations, why India? Why India? Why India, not, uh, not China, not uh, Indonesia, not, uh, not uh, any country? Why India? Because then I think, uh, you see, there are many different examples, but if you look at what today, today what's happening in the, in the, glo in the globe, you know, uh, most of the, today the still, the Western model of culture is still, it's still dominated. It's still dominated in Europe. And it has dominated to some extent all the parts of the world. We, all of us, okay, we have our own culture, our own traditions, but to some extent we are also slaves of the Western culture. To some extent, yes. At least through the consumption model. Mm. We consume the same thing like in Germany, America. We, we like very much Coca-Cola, McDonald's, I mean, this kind of uh, bullshit things, but we like them because it has become a part of our living. <laughs> so, that's, uh, is, so we cannot say <coughs> we have nothing to do with the Western model. We have to be humble and honest. We should recognize that to some extent, we are slave of this model. Not completely slave. Uh, we, we maybe we are rebelling a little bit. Some people are rebelling more than others. <laughs> yes, trying to find some other models. That's true. That's true if you look at what's happening in Asia, for instance, but uh, uh, other places also. Many people, they are trying to fight this model, to find something else different, much more effective and much more human, which is, I think, the right way to do things. Because why? Because there are two reasons. First, we have this uh, prestigious religions. Most of them, unfortunately, disappeared. And uh, we have also what's happening in the West, because you know, if you look what's happening in the West, France, Germany, Eastern Europe, you know, everywhere, UK, America, the model is declining. <coughs> this uh, decline of the model is recognized by, by all people, including the Western people. So I can tell you, I have, uh, you know, I can share with you some many books, French, written by French people, for instance, written saying that, you know, it's time for the West to change civilization. This is the title of the book. Edgar Morin, Edgar Morin, French, very known in France. The title is, it's time for the West to change. Il est temps de changer de civilisation. It's time for us Western people to change civilization. Yes, I can, I can do that. So Edgar Morin, but there are many other authors also. Yes. If you look at uh, Goethe, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Brecht, Goethe, uh, Schopenhauer, even start to 
shop an hour, etc. They have a criticize. I can write here. I can write here. Here. Ah, okay. So there are many. I can give you a top kind of a, a bibliography references that you can. Uh, Edgar Morin. Edgar. Edgar Morin. Edgar Morin, il est temps, it's time to change civilization. There are many books you can find this book. It's time to change civilization. It's time to change our civilization. Means that, you know, many people, not only Edgar Morin, they have uh, uh, developed this kind of uh, very excellent uh, uh, idea that the West is declining. Is declining. There is a crisis. Some people that talk about the crisis, the crisis of the modern itself. You know, this crisis is the multifaceted crisis. Look, for instance, you know, because you are, I mean, in India we are very familiar with this economics, <coughs> GDP, the GDP. What is the GDP rate now? The average in Europe. Do you know? The average. Moyen, the, 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 in French, the GDP, what is the taux de croissance, croissance, uh, well, the, la croissance, oui. what is the average of the rates in Europe, do you know? Uh, average, you mean the average GDP? I can't repeat yeah. It. yeah, it's not more than that, not more than that. In France, it's uh, one, uh, one point two or something like that. <laughs> Sometimes it's zero or something. There is no development. The development was outstanding during the last uh, two centuries. And this last 50 years after the Second World War, starting developing Second World War because of the Marshall Plan, Marshall, the American plan to help the West to develop after the, uh, the Nazi yeah, war. And after that, uh, now after the 70s, things stagnation and then start declining. This is the economic side. But you know, but not only the economic side. Cultural side also is in crisis. Moral, moral side, moral. So the West uh, was supposed to be not only very effective economically, but also morally, ethically, yeah, ethically, you know, ethically linked to the, the Protestants, Protestantism, you know, the religion, yeah. mythic Protestant, very powerful, you know. You have to be very effective in economic developing, economic development, but also you have to be ethical. And you know, it's some kind like uh, Bhagavad Gita. You know, you know, Bhagavad Gita says, you know, that you know, your work should be considered as a sacred, given, heaven. You know, and devoir. It's a duty. You know, I am working not because I am getting some salary, but because it's a duty. It's a duty. So the ethic protestant is the same thing. Can you see the big difference in the culture between the Indian culture, Bhagavad Gita, and the, and the, uh, le protestantism, the, the Luther, it's very different. But still, you know, the principles are very, I mean, close, not very far. So, uh, because the, now the West is declining in this kind of a side, in the moral side. Uh, criminal things are there, corruption has increased, no, I mean, Corruption in the West is very intelligent. It's not like uh, in India or the underdeveloped. The corruption is very intelligent. They are using, you know, you have read, you know, the Panama Papers. Panama Papers. <laughs> you know, <coughs> people, they are using the, the you know, the, this what called the paradise, you know, the heaven, the heaven, <laughs> heaven countries, you know, no tax, they say no tax. You know, people, even if people are still living like slaves, but still it's very, very, uh, uh, effective for people coming from the West. They are putting their money there. They pay no tax. They are contributing zero. They are, they are not contributing at all to any kind of people in the West, but they are taking the benefit. Of. So this is kind of a very intelligent corruption, you know. I mean, intelligent, uh, well, it's not intelligent, but it, it means very effective, let's say. Effective, very effective. They know how to, uh, to do that. So unlike uh, 
uh, underdeveloped countries like in India, corruption is very, give me money, otherwise I will not do it <laughs> immediately, you know, they have this cash, cash, you know. It's very visible, very transparent, you know. The work is not visible, it's not transparent, you know. Transparency is okay, but behind the secret of things, because it's much more refined, say, say some secrecy. Very well, well designed. The process is well designed, well designed, you know. Yeah, and management, one of the purpose of management is to help people corrupt and being corrupted without visibility, without any visibility. And also uh, getting the huge profit for them, a huge profit. You know, uh, in France, for instance, we have uh, some people, they are advisors. So because, you know, in, in, uh, in France, like all countries, we have to pay tax. If you are working, you have to pay tax, okay? Income tax and all that. Normal, yeah? But uh, in France, for many people, they are becoming experts. They will advise you how to avoid taxing, paying tax. You know, and it's, I mean, it's almost legal. So you go and meet some people, they are experts in accounting, finance, and like that. Say, sir, I'm paying a lot of, uh, you know, I'm paying uh, 1,000 uh, rupees, and like that. I think I'd like to pay, can you help me to pay less? They will tell you, be legal, you know, ethical. No, 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 yes, yes, I will help you. And they will find how to help you, you know. Instead of paying 1,000 rupees, you will pay 500, 400, or something like that, and he will take some part of money. <laughs> the system is, is, is like that. This is the theory. So, uh, this, this is the, the whole, uh, I don't know if you are uh, with me, stay with me, or you are lost. Are you lost? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. So, just to give you an idea of the context of what I'm talking, I will be talking about, and uh, why it's necessary to look at that. Because if you just, uh, yes, we have to learn the culture, we have to improve our understanding, you know. You, you have to meet people, different people, to understand the culture, tradition. So for the knowledge purpose, it's very important. But it's not only for the knowledge. It's, it's for, the, for, the, <coughs> for the, the destiny of the society. You know, for the destiny. Because it's needed, it's needed. As I told you before, an example, Edgar Moore is one example. Tomorrow I'll give you talk, many, I'll give you a list of uh, many people that have been working on that kind of stuff. Why they were still declining? Why, what are the reasons? And they will describe very in details, in depth, in depth, uh, the characteristics of, the, of this decline. And why you need something else. So I met with Edgar Moulin some time back because I think, I don't know if he died or not, because he's 100 years more, you know? Still very, very you know, power in terms of, uh, you know, memory, uh, ideas, interesting. I think, uh, yeah, he, he is now more than, if it's, I don't know if he died or not. He was 100 years, yeah, 100 years, 100 years. I met him, he was 1998 or something like that. Very bright, very bright. So I told him, you know, I, uh, I don't agree with this. Change the civilization means, no, you have to shift from one civilization to another one. It's not very clear. So what does it mean, you know? Because the West is declining, we agree with that. Many people agree, the Western people, some people, people who are, I mean, honest, <coughs> they, they know, they acknowledge that. You know, they recognize that, yes, the, the West is declining. In different times, I told you, in different dimensions. But, uh, you know, we have to deepen the, our knowledge of this decline and then find what he did to, to change that, to get out of that. What, what are the changes which are needed? Uh, did the changes, I mean, th those changes, you know, needed should come from the inside the society or from outside? It's a discussion we have. Because we have, as I told you, we have different civilization. So do you think that we can learn from Latin America or not? Latin America is not known, you know? It's known as a market. The same thing in India. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure that you agree with me. India is now very known. I remember, you know, 25 years back, when I was in Marseille, I was trying to convince my boss to have some partnership with Indian University. He told me very clearly, Madun, forget that. We have nothing to learn from India. Go to China or go to US. First US, and then maybe you can go to China because China was very popular at that time. So forget India because nothing is there. This is what he told me. Now things have changed. <coughs> so I had one uh, file like this to convince him. <laughs> he 
they took the file and put it. So come uh, next year or two years, you know, you come again. <laughs> Very politely he told me, no, okay, <laughs> so you are not on the right track. So okay, I forget that after two, three years, then he started again, another one. Uh, who, I mean, depending on the person, or some person are much more, I mean, open to other cultures than others. That's personal thing. Some people, they are very, we call this, impermeable. How do you translate impermeable? Impermeable. 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 Impermeable means like a wall, you know? You cannot get in. Look, it's a wall with, with concrete, with cement. It's impermeable. No, nothing can go through. Nothing can. No. No. The impermeable. Impermeable. So, but others, they are much more open. Then there is a, but there is a degree in the openness. Not the, 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 the nature is that uh, we, we think that we, we think that our cultures are not uh, fitting each other. They, they don't fit. They are very different. So, okay, we respect, we, yeah, we like to know, but I don't think that we have much to learn from them. No? So, but now, India is known, is very known, very popular. Why? Do you know why? Technology. Hmm? The growth rate? <coughs> Why? Why the India India now is very popular for people would like to come here? Exactly. Exactly. India India now is known as a very important destination because it's a market. It's a market. A traditional market. We can sell and we can make make here cheap things because the labor is very, very, very low. But it's a market also. What can you imagine? In France, we have uh, uh, 65 million, no? It's uh, how many crores? Uh, six, uh, six, six crores. Six crores. Yeah, six, uh, six, six crores of Pilar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you see? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a district of uh, Tamil Nadu, you know? <laughs> it's a district of Tamil Nadu. <laughs> so nothing, you know? So selling to the big market like India is very important. No? You know? This is why many French companies are coming to India because of the market, because they can sell many things, products, different kinds of products. And also they can make different things, like you can see the Renault, Renault, this car maker, you know, Renault. Renault yeah, it's, a, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good uh, car maker. Yeah. It's not so very special, my car, but they have improved, they have improved. But I remember 25 years, they came with the with the vehicle to India, called the uh, uh, Lagan. Lagan, Lagan, Logan. Logan. <laughs> Logan. Do you remember the Logan? <laughs> the Logan. It was very shameful, you know. And I have very good friends, I have Tamil. Huh? <laughs> so I used to I work with the Renault for some time as consultant. Good friends, we became very good friends with the HR. HR group. I told him, sir, you know, this is not the way to treat India. You know, you are not uh, understanding what's happening. It's changing. Your Logan is a failure. You, you have not understood that? So, no, no, we are increasing the, the volume of the sales. Yeah, but how many are increasing? It's a bullshit, nothing, you know, negligible. Because, you know, the, the Logan was sold by, uh, for the taxi drivers, you know, taxi, mm -hmm. taxi drivers to increase the volume. So, because Indians, they, they can cheat you, you know. <laughs> Business uh, men in India, yeah, they are very good in cheating. You know? They want, they can cheat you very easily. <laughs> so they put, they put the figures in the Logan, and they tell you, oh, the taxi driver said, oh, look, look, I have increased. So I think it was, uh, I mean, two years or three years, and then because the, the market of the taxi driver, you know, <laughs> saturation, <laughs> then nothing will happen. Then they understood that, you know, it was not the thing. Then they completely stopped, you know, uh, the relation with India. And again, they were thinking, now today they are doing, so now, now they are making uh, good uh, cars in uh, Tamil Nadu. Yeah. In Tamil Nadu, good cars in the SL. And they are uh, very, very profitable now, understand? So these are the things. So India uh, is popular, very known, because it's a market. Not because of culture, the civilization, what we are talking about. 
decision. This is a decision. No, they are not interested in that. Really. So they are not interested in that. Let me give you an example, and then I go in depth in that thing. I, another example. So when I was in IM3, I was in charge with the international relations. So recruiting students, sending students, you know, exchange students, exchange faculty. You understand? Yeah. Exchanging. So students from India come to France, different campuses, and we send, you know, students to different places. So it was very difficult at that time to convince French students to go to India. I was struggling to bring, uh, I am pretty, I think I brought six or seven in, in three years. It was nothing, you know. Indian people, they go, and they, you know, they live with the English, they want to go there. Okay, you know, different thing, but still, what does it <coughs> mean? It means that uh, from one side, Indian students, they are in the learning process and curiosity. It's curiosity, you know curiosity? Yeah. They want to know what is this, what's happening there. Even if they go for tourism, they want to understand, to see, to say, you know. French, they are not interested. They are not interested. I was struggling to... to and then, this is one point. The second point, so you are sending students to France, okay? Mm. And Indian are coming to France. And the French are going to India. No exchange, partnership, mm. partnership, okay? So we have to think what happened during those. You spend six months and other six months, other six months. During, for instance, five years, you have to assess what happened. What happened? In the mind, in the knowledge, what happened? And also, because we are partnering, <coughs> we have partnership for two, three, four, five years, you know? So we have to question our partnership. Wha wha what does this partnership uh, bring to the, the organization, the culture, you know, the programs? Are we changing something in our program because of the exchanges? Are you changing something because of the the learning, uh, the learn. So, you know, if you are learning, it means you know, the learning should impact, mm. to some extent, your behavior, your attitude, and your organization. Believe me, you can. This is an interesting research. I can tell you worldwide. You know, what happened in the organization, which were developing partnership during ten years, twenty years. Most of them, nothing. Nothing. Nothing happened. If you ask uh, ESEC people, ESEC people, let me give you an example of ESEC. It is one of the best partnership with India, ESEC. They started the partnership with Anidabad. I am Anidabad, mm. many years back. And they call it strategic partnership. So every year they check what can we learn, what can we do differently because of our interaction with Anidabad and with India in general. This is the only thing. But still, I think uh, if you look at the uh, ESEC program, ESEC what, how they are doing business, not much has changed. Because they are much more influenced by the Western model than the Indian model. Which is not easy, I understand, but still, I think. Uh, so this is the thing we are w trying to work on in this uh, ESEC school, which is very interesting. But still, I think uh, it's very hard, but, uh, uh, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's extremely important to, at least to start thinking uh, of that, you know. Otherwise we are, okay, students, uh, students are learning something, okay, they are visiting, tourism, okay, their uh, geographical knowledge is increasing, <laughs> they know what is uh, Paris, they know that it's in Europe, <laughs> and in France, uh, but I think we have to deepen the, the, the learning process, what we are learning really, which might impact what we are doing and how we are doing business. So this is uh, my main, uh, main uh, uh, point of uh, focus. Is it okay? Do, do you have any question? Because uh, I don't know if you want to maybe check. Maybe you can ask me something if you want. Your neighbor, you can ask him bye-bye. Uh, you can ask Itras. <laughs> How are you? Changes, 
believe some people think Jesus is just an idiot. Just think he's an evil. I mean, uh, he didn't prove that he was an angel. But the first bloody, the, what you learn in your class of physics or math, it's like if you're a massive before, you're just massive now. It's like, are we stuck somewhere? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this is a really good, good thing. But I think that... Uh, my, in my opinion, because you know, when you meet you know, people in the business, because uh, what is uh, interesting in this ISEC, ISEC every, every year, they have uh, they <coughs> call the, the meeting of transformation in September during three days, every year. So they assess what happened, what, uh, what we are expecting, etc. But, so three, three days. The first day is uh, uh, academics, you know, PhD people, teachers, we, they, uh, they, uh, they suggest some, uh, I mean, their paper, some, someone is writing a paper or some, doing some research in the transformation area, change area, they will uh, share with people and then a discussion is, will happen. So, for instance, you know, like uh, the relation with China and uh, when we are working with China for two years, three years, something like that. So, what kind, in your department of transformation, uh, do you think that, you know, from your experience, Chinese experience, are you doing things differently or not? And if, if yes, what are the different changes you are doing now because of the experience of China? Without that experience, you would have behaved differently. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. So this is extremely important. Then we discuss with managers. Managers means, you know, the, the managers that are impacted by the business, you know, but uh, but it's still it's still personal personal way of uh, behaving. So some managers they they spend you know let's say ten years in China. They have been impacted by China. Others twenty after twenty years they have not been impacted by by China because they were not able and they still are not able to understand what what's happening in China and to China. You know they know China from the business perspective, how to make profit, how to increase effectiveness, and how to, how to, how to decrease the labor costs of Chinese and increase performance of Chinese people. This they know. But the context, they don't know much about. The context, the culture, they don't know much about. And some of them, some of them, they don't want to go beyond that. You know, I am not in China to learn the uh, Chinese civilization. I am not in India to understand Indian civilization. Mm. I am here to do business and hopefully to help Indian people to improve their business using my model. <laughs> it's very easy. Latin America, nothing to learn from Latin America. And it has some time, and Latin America was just, you know, just a subsidiary of the uh, US, you know? Yeah? Latin, we say Latin America. Latin means, you know, far away. But the main thing is America. And then Latin America, like uh, the West, and then you have Africa, okay, Africa or uh, Middle East or something like that, just uh, sub, uh, suburbs, suburbs, the suburbs, the outskirts of the model, <laughs> outskirts of the model, that's the thing. But this is why uh, America and the uh, European, they are not happy when some, uh, some Latin American people, some Latin American people, they want to do things differently, their own way, you know. They include the natives, uh, Aztec, the Aztec. What is this Aztec? It's dead, <laughs> dead, or something like that. So the European uh, are amazed. They said, you know, what is this? It's a stupid thing, you know. They, you know, you are American. You are not Aztec or Maya. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's it. And the same thing for India. If you, you are India, you are talking about Bhagavad Gita, or Mahabharata. Okay, that's fine for the culture, for the Jews. But uh, it has nothing to do with business, you know. Does it improve something in the business? No. I mean, people are convinced that no. Mm. Yeah, that's it. So this is why I think this is the purpose of this thing. So now let me go a little bit uh, ahead. But I hope that you have understood my uh, general uh, thing. So it's important to understand the context, you know. So, uh, okay, this is about the epopee, and then I added to this, if I see, the convergence, how do you translate convergence? Ah, same, yeah? Okay. So when, uh, why I'm saying that? Because today I'd like to a little bit spend more time in this first point, okay? <coughs> so about the epopee. So I, I, <laughs> this is very interesting. Laquette, I, this is subtitle. Subtitle? 
tutte, si tutte. Euh, la quête désespérée du bonheur et de l'immortalité et le prix à en payer. Can you understand this? La quête désespérée. La quête means in search of desperate, it's a desperate, desperate, we, it's a desperate search of happiness and immortality. That was the purpose of man from the beginning, from the chaos. From the chaos. What does it mean, the chaos? Le chaos. Le chaos means nothing, empty things. But not only that, it was plenty also. It was empty, nothing was there, but it was full of mysteries, of uh, strange things, something like that. This is the chaos. You know, it was working, but in a, a chaotic manner, quick manner. So, but, and today, today is absolutely one of the subtitles of the book. So, because now we are writing the second book. So, the, the desperate search, why desperate? Because even if you, you know, the Pandora, you know the Pandora box? <laughs> Pandora box? You know, don't open the, the, don't open, don't open the box. If you open, you will be in trouble. But uh, if you see, not Prometheus, you see, he opened it. Mm. Why he opened that box? And, you know, he should have respected, you know, he said, no, I will not uh, open the box. Mm. It was a promise. You should, you know, respect the promise, you know. Why you are not respecting your promise? Okay, you don't break. So you will be suffering. You open the Pandora box, and then all the suffering from that time. So today, today, we are in a trouble today, misery, poverty, suffering, because of that, just uh, because the Pandora box was open. So today, today, for instance, why poverty in, in the world, not only in India, is not really decreasing much. It's decreasing a little bit, not much. Why? Because the money has successfully Mm. And when some people don't want to give more explanation, why? We are very rich. We are very rich. We have plenty of money. And still many people are very poor. Why? So some intelligent people, they will tell you, do not open the Pandora box. Do not open the Pandora box. You will be in trouble. <laughs> in trouble. Because you want to understand, this is curiosity. Curiosity is not allowed, was not allowed, and still it's not allowed. Then depending on people, you know, stuff. But generally, it's not in the West. This is why improvement is not taking place, because most of the people who want to um, to open the Pandora box are not allowed to do that. And if you do that, then you will be immediately excluded. I can tell you this. Look during the, the COVID, the COVID. So people were trying to reflect, to think, to find, what are you doing? No, 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 follow what we are saying. Why you are trying to open different boxes? No. And this is why, instead of solving the problem in one year, it will take two years, three years, five years, and many years. And nothing will happen. Not only we're not improving, but nothing will happen. Because no one would like to open the Pandora box. Because suffering is there, a lot of things, you know. Pain is there, poverty is there, conflict, conflict, conflictual tendencies of people, immoral things are there, diseases are there. And we are not able to solve all the problems. Mm -hmm. So this is why instead of opening, keep it, you know, keep it closed. Keep it close. Still you think it will take some time, but you know, it's not time to do that. So this guy said, you know, it's time to change civilization. I am saying it's time to look at other civilization and to find how to go for an, in, an inclusive and not an exclusive. So, which means, it means we are not here to fight. We are not here to judge. 
this civilization. So now we know what happened and we know what's happening. Okay, so we want to stop that. So why we have to stop? So instead of judging this civilization is better than this, which is a little bit complex, you know, which civilization is the best? We don't know. You know, all civilizations are good. So like men, you know, men or women, men. And in a man, there is the divine part and there is the wild, savage, mo mo monster part. Both are in the one. <laughs> Both in, in one, one person. Well, you, uh, the same thing about civilization, civilization made by people. And in the people, we find the both sides, both sides, the good and the bad within. So people, people who really improve and want to improve, they have to dig inside first to better understand yourself. You are not the best, you are not perfect. You think that you are perfect, and you want to give this image that you are the perfect person, the best, the most uh, uh, thing, uh, the most effective, etc. But if you dig a little bit, you will find that, okay, you are doing well, but you are not the best. There are many side effects in your own thing. So, to some extent, even some some people like prestigious people, yeah. And if if really we love these people, I love this. Like Gandhi, Gandhi, Ma, uh, Ma, Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi. Many people today have, you, have written books saying, you know, oh, Mahatma was not really Mahatma. It was something, uh, side effect. Yes, well, yes, side effect was there. But if you, if you wait, you know, the advantages and the, the, the strength and the weaknesses, you will find definitely he was, he was uh, above, uh, above uh, anyone. <laughs> above anyone. And there are not many Gandhi in the world. Maybe uh, Mandela or something like that. Uh, look, the example, Mandela and Gandhi, they are loved by all people, but no one is following them. <laughs> and in the West, in the West, everywhere, you know, people, they love Gandhi. In the West, in France, we love Gandhi and Mandela. Mandela is God. But who is following Mandela? No one. Absolutely no one. This, this is the kind of thing, contradiction. Contradiction. Because we are not able to dig in ourselves. We think we are <coughs> the best. We are still the best. You understand? So these are the things, uh, the thing I wanted to develop a little bit. I give you some, uh, so you can stop me or always I will not stop by myself making. If you have some questions. Hmm? And please don't sleep, yeah? If you want to have a break or you have to questions, better have question and then have a break. Because you should deserve a break. How? Asking question. Not sleeping. If you sleep, you have no break. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. Any question? Uh, have you understood the general uh, thing I'd like to, uh, I'd like just to make you understand, you know, what is the contents and uh, why uh, complexity? This Edgar Mona is one, uh, we call him the champion of complexity. Yeah, the champion of complexity. Because, you know, the world, the Western world, is, uh, thinks everything is simple. They are the best, so they can solve any kind of problem using their reason, rationality. Rationality, you know? So in the business schools, we, we learn how to solve the problem. Solving a problem mindset. First point, second point, third point, and then sixth point, problem is solved. <laughs> so the simple mind, simple mind, simple mind is extremely dangerous mind. You know? Yes. Please. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, it, it, it might be uh, in some kind of uh, special uh, cases required, but we have to wait, uh, do some weightage, you know, of the consequences. Consequences. 
the, the, the positive consequences and the negative consequences of radical revolution. You know? And to make it a little bit more complex, you have to look at the consequences, positive and the negative, not only in the short run, but in the long run. Soviet Union was a revolution. October 17th, he said October. See, uh, revolution, October revolution, 17th, yeah? A radical change, yeah? Removing the Tsar kingdom, the empire Tsar. At that time, the ruling people were very intelligent, bright, you know, bright, enlightened, like our French Louis XIV, Louis XIV, Enlightenment civilization, French. Paris is known as the city of lights. Why? Not because of our uh, electricity, <laughs> light, lamps. No, no. Because of the intellectual, the impact of Voltaire, Rousseau. I will not have time. Maybe you can ask me a question about that. Voltaire, Rousseau, uh, Diderot, um, uh, Racine, uh, Brian Hugh, Victor Hugo. What, what kind of thing? What kind of what kind of minds? What kind of and in Russia, Tolstoy, Gogol, Dostoevsky. Yeah. Very strange. This is the light because you know it reduces the ignorance. Yeah. But now, what is the light? What is the light? It's still there, but very, very, very. The light strange. goes inside the candle. Ah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Light is inside, and many people they don't they don't allow the inside to get out. You understand? But unfortunately, many people are still are still closed enough not to look inside. Be, why? We will see. No, for instance, you know, uh, in the West we have the gods, the gods. Gods, the, the dieu, gods, and the hero, the hero, Superman, super power people, you know? And uh, in India, we have the same thing. But the difference is, uh, you know, in, uh, for instance, you look at, uh, I hope that, uh, oh, maybe you can talk a little bit about the epopee, the, the Greek, mm -hmm. the Greek, yeah? You know a little bit, yeah? Odyssey, Iliad. Yeah. It has to be read. Mm -hmm. You have to read that. And we can discuss what are the difference in development. <coughs> so we have this uh, big uh, thing, uh, uh, revolution, uh, change happens through the hero, Ulysses, and this kind of, uh, yeah, Andromac and uh, uh, Prometheus. Mm. You know, and uh, you have some kind of burial. Yeah, you should uh, develop this to some limits. Mm. And the limits, the limits are defined by God, mm. or by kind of a intelligent hand, mm. intelligent hand. So Adam Smith, you know the, the market, the economics, yeah. the market, he said that the intelligent hand is a given hand. Yeah. It, will, it will regulate everything. Yeah. Everything will be regulated by itself. Yeah. You don't have to intervene, mm. you know? Intervening is very bad, you know, you will disturb the system. But this was the cow, cow look cow in the beginning of the world, the cow, nothing was there. And then we started developing, changing things, changing, changing, all the time within some kind of limit. So if you cross the limit, then you have to accept the consequences of exceeding the limit mm -hmm. and not respecting the limit. This was the case of Pandora, but also in India, Rama, Rama, okay? So to what extent we have to obey the rules? So Shiva, he doesn't like the rules. He wants to break the rules. But why? Not for, for his own interest, for the general interest. And you know, in the opposite, we have Rama. Rama, he wants to obey. This is why he decided to, when it was unjust, he was, uh, you know, asked to go, you know, for exile. He was deserving to be the, the king, you know? Yeah. But he was not allowed. By whom? By his father, mm -hmm. through his uh, mother-in-law, uh, you know? But he accepted the law and the principle because also he obeyed his father. Mm. You know, obeying, <coughs> obeying mm. father. Not only the rules, but father. Yeah. And also because in the mind, there is the long run. Okay, I'm going now, but it doesn't mean that uh, I accepted everything. I'm going because I respect my, my father. 
I took these rules. I disagree with the rules. Okay, but these rules are there, so I accept them. So I'm going. But for the short run. So he then he came back with the with the, with the with the right rules, the right behaviors. This is this is the ideal way of running a society and running himself. Running himself. So you can see from P civilization we have some. So now I can come to my point. So you can see the examples, but also you can the Greek, you know, some of the Greek at that time when they fight, you know, they uh, the, the, the Trois, la, la guerre de Trois, mm -hmm. la guerre de Trois, it was finished, they destroyed everything. <laughs> everything was destroyed. Yeah. So people, innocent people, oh, kill people, you know, we don't, because there was a promise. Agamemnon said, I don't, nothing will be done. The same thing happened in Carthage. Have you heard of Carthage? Yeah. Carthage. Carthage, the war, three wars between Roman and the, and the Carthage, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And Carthage was uh, very powerful, but it was not competing Rome. Mm -hmm. But they were powerful because the, uh, in the sea, like the, Gre the Greek in the sea, you know, easy, you know, very powerful. They have very good uh, boats and this kind of things, you know? And Carthage was very powerful at that time, but it was not against Rome. But for Rome, it was a competitor, a dangerous competitor. This is why the Greek also, in the methodology, mythology, he said, you know, the father, you know, if uh, uh, he has some sons and, uh, and, uh, and daughters, and he heard that, you know, one of my son will kill me and to take the power, take the kingdom, you know? So what should I do? So I kill all my, my sons and daughters, I, especially sons, because the women at that time were not supposed to, to become king or something. Yeah, at that, that time. So he killed all the sons. You know? Very, very awful, isn't it? So uh, the, the spouses, oh, they, 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 should to, they should find some, uh, how do you call it? Les ruses, les ruses. How, to, les, how do you say the ruse? Ruse. Ruse means, uh, how do you say? Les ruses. Rusé, rusé. Rusé like an animal. Yeah. Huh? R R U S C S E ruse la ruse la ruse I will find something because you know you are my enemy you are my enemy but you are very powerful so I cannot fight so I have to find how to kill you but you know without uh, you know without any doubt you know there will not be any doubt that you know I am your enemy but you know I have to find some ruse some t some uh, some tricks or something like that but intelligence like you know intelligence. You have to think, you have to think yeah. how to destroy you, mm. you know, without any kind of visibility. Mm. Yes. So you will consider me as your friend mm. all the time. Mm. And one day, by surprise, you will find that, you know, I am killing you. Mm. And you are dead, finished. Mm. And it's too late to be surprised, but you are dead. <laughs> So this happened in the Greek, you know, uh, you know, the Greek gods, the gods themselves, you know, Zeus, the, 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 the god of the gods, Zeus. Zeus, he could kill anyone in the world, anyone. But still, uh, some people were intelligent, like, uh, like, uh, like uh, Promete, like, uh, like uh, Ondor, like, uh, like uh, um, what is the name? Uh, uh, many people are very intelligent. They cannot fight, you know, Zeus. Mm. If Zeus happen to know that you are trying to remove him or to do something against him, immediately will disappear. Because he has the la foudre. What do you call the foudre? La foudre. Mm, the la lightning. Foudre. lightning, you know. Immediately the lightning, or everything will disappear. Like, uh, you know, this kind of uh, earthquake or, you know, he will disappear immediately, you know. But some people are such very intelligent. They know that uh, this Zeus was very powerful. So I have to find how to hurt him. But he should not know anything about what I am doing against him. I am his son or brother. But I have to kill him. But I know if he happened to learn that I am killing him, I have this intention, immediately I will disappear. So this is why I have to find how to do things smoothly without his knowledge. No, to the last moment, he should not know. 
finding some ruse. Ruse is some kind of, in, some kind of intelligence. Mm -hmm. But in the bad thing, you know, I mean, I mean, in the bad thing, but sometimes it's a revenge, revenge, you know, revenging. If you have to revenge your friend, like uh, Ashid, Ashid, you know? Ashid, Ashid. He went to war against the Pope because, you know, his, uh, his uh, friend, boyfriend or girlfriend, or, you know, he was killed. And, yeah, and he had to revenge. Mm -hmm. But before, he was away of the war. He didn't want to go to the war. It is, it is, is one of the best intelligence. Mm -hmm. All the time he is trying to find, you know, how to, oh, Cyclops, Cyclops, I am your friend, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to meet you, Cyclops. And then he's preparing for his death. He lands him. Yeah. Exactly, the, le, le, le cheval de Troyes. This is, now it's an expression, you know, in French. We say, le cheval de Troyes. How do you call it? The Trojan horse. Yeah? Trojan horse. Trojan horse. Trojan horse. Trojan horse. Yeah. The, the horse of Troyes. Right? Yeah. Trojan horse. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Exactly. Le cheval de Troyes. Le cheval de Troyes. Like cheval. Some kind of horse, wooden made. Yeah. And you know, all the soldiers, Hidden inside. <coughs> this is uh, an example of la ruse uh, uh, trick. Some trick. Ruse in French. Ruse. R U S E in French. Yeah? In French. So, to relate to what's happening today, everyone is uh, using the same thing also. Ruse. Trying to find. Oh, yes, I am. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, all people, I love all people. Okay, but I am firing people, but you know, but I have to do that. But also, I love all people. Mm. So people are the managers, leaders, the leaders. We, all of us, are searching the leader, the best leader. Hopefully, in India, they are expecting that Ram will come back. Ram, Rama, the Ram model will come back. <laughs> because they are not able to find the Ram model now. Or the Gandhian model, where is he? He's not there. He's not here. So what's happening? So we have to find how to ruse, mm. to be intelligent, not to open the Pandora box. Mm. But uh, there are many leaders in India, you know? Yeah, all of them are using Gandhian, the Gandhian way of leading, mm. the Gandhian way. Some people, they are using Mahab Mahabharata, Mahabharata, or Rama, Rama. An example, example, finding, you know, what are the different features, characteristics of a good leader? Mm. Yeah? So from Gandhia, from the Rama, from this kind of thing. Okay, this is the visible part of the leader, but it, what is about the dark side of the leader? Mm. No one is talking about that. Let me give you another example to maybe to close this example. Recently, because, uh, it's recent because you can, I don't know if you are understanding my point, linking the past to the what's happening today. We are supposed to be modern, but we are not modern, we are still wild. We are barbarian, we are killing each other. We are killing today each other. Not only what's happening in the world, Ukraine and etc. Criminal things are happening there. Yeah, in the Middle East, etc. But even in the society themselves, we are killing people. We are silencing people. <coughs> silencing. Silencing is killing, no? Mm. Yeah. If you ask something and you force him to mm. shut his mouth, you, you, you are killing him. You know? yeah. I want to contribute. And people are telling me, no, 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 no. Don't open your mouth. Because you are uh, dangering things. Endangering things. Shut up. Wait your time, but it's not time for you to talk. <laughs> so, so, so you are killing these people, you know, all the potential. And to some extent, to some extent, why people are leaving the countries in this kind of going somewhere, looking for the, mm. the disparate search of uh, yeah. happiness and yeah. freedom. Freedom. <coughs> freedom. Yeah. We, all of us, are searching for the freedom. Mm. But what is the freedom? We go to US, we work very effectively, good things happening there. But after some time, 
It's not the freedom. I have to go somewhere else. And uh, the Indian civilization is very, very powerful. To Gujarat, to, to Mahavir, to uh, Buddha. Buddha example. Buddha, Buddha, Buddha is the example, no? Buddha is the best example for me. The best example. I am not Buddhist, but I wish I could be Buddhist. But this is the best, because we are not able to be like Buddha. Yes. Can you see? Now we have rich people, you know. Do, do you think that they can, they can sacrifice one rupee? No. They will sacrifice one it's needed uh, to improve their image. <laughs> but Buddha, no, he decided to go. And this is the freedom. You go and meet people and uh, learn by yourself. Not collect the knowledge given here and there, but know by yourself and meet people. Because, you know, if he, uh, if he remained in this castle, nothing will happen. He will become king, no problem, yeah? King and then rule the country, etc. Not rich, no luxurious. But the country, like the Tsar in Russia, the Tsar, after some time, he was removed by uh, Lenin and uh, the Marxism. And then the Soviet Union was removed by the by this uh, drunken guy, Eltsin, Eltsin, uh, Boris, uh, Boris, Boris Eltsin, or something like that. Yeah. So uh, this is the history thing. <coughs> leader is there? No. I'm interested in knowing the dark side of the leader. Dark side of the leader. And you have to access the dark side. You have to access. And this is uh, this is. I wanted to give you this example because I, I don't want to forget this example because it's very recent, but still it gives a good idea. Have you heard of this, uh, the CEO of Renault a few years, a few years, 10 years back maybe? The, the CEO of a Renault company. Have you heard of this? His name was, uh, he's still, uh, he's now he is, I think, refugee. <laughs> Billionaire, very, very intelligent guy. Uh, his name was Carlos Goss. <coughs> Carlos. Goss, Carlos Goss, Gossen, G G O G H O S. Can you find this? I'm not uh, sure about about the spelling, but Carlos Goss, Goss is a G H. Yeah, uh, you do you know? Have you know? Uh, <coughs> yeah, yeah. You you heard of that uh, CEO? Carlos, Carlos Goss. Yeah, Carlos. He was the CEO of Reno. Do you know what happened to him? No, no, you don't know. Carlos Goss, he was the CEO during maybe 10 years or 15 years CEO. He reached the highest level, not only in terms of, so uh, Renault bought at that time Nissan. Mm. Nissan. Mm. Nissan was Japanese. It's still Japanese, Nissan. So he, he, uh, he became a god in Japan. No, no, he was like god in Japan because he saved Nissan from bankruptcy. He saved uh, Nissan. And then he wanted to merge Renault with Nissan. Okay? Everything was fine. But no one knows about the dark side of things. What was happening in the Japanese side and the French side? French side. No one understood at that time what, what was happening. What, 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 what were the ruse, the ruse, les ruses? Fantastic example. Fantastic example of the epopies of the epopies, the modern epopies, 20th century epopies. Mm -hmm. Carlos goes, he reached the highest level. And when he succeeded merging Nissan with Renault, mm -hmm. and Nissan became, because it was going bankrupt, Nissan. Mm -hmm. And he saved the Nissan, and Nissan became <laughs> Every time he, he goes to Japan, you know, people, they rush to the airport. So he was a god. Our God has come, our God. Yeah, because he, you know the importance of, of Japanese, of, of the image, yeah. the image. So I think uh, he was very successful during maybe 10 years, something like that. The most, uh, most important leader in the world, etc. And uh, everyone wanted to know how he was doing, how he was, uh, how he was uh, uh, you know, branding the company and the Japanese and the uh, cultural differences between Japan. And he uh, really, I don't know if it was honest from himself or not, but he, uh, he, uh, he fell in love with the Japanese culture. Mm. 
was it superficial because uh, he was considered as a god? So if you say that Madun is a god, I will love you immediately. <laughs> this kind of uh, fair exchanges, you can say. So he was like that the emperor was like. And uh, up to one day, you know, people discovered maybe some Japanese, you know, hidden, hidden monster, you know, trying to kill Gosh, trying to kill him. But since Gosh was the god, he could not explicitly and visibly kill him. So he, this Japanese traitor, had to find one reason, you know, to fight Gosh and to remove him and to take his place. But how? He remained good. It took years. It took years. Japanese plots. Clash, clash of culture, mm. clash of culture. They started, you know, developing some, some hatred against Gosh. Mm. Not only because he was the leader trying to kill the Indian, the Japanese, but also because he is Western French. Mm. And then he found some, uh, some evidence. He was not, uh, you know, paying tax. Gosh, mm. not paying tax. And, you know, he, he celebrated his uh, wedding, his wedding, not his daughter wedding. Yeah. He was 65, something like that. He uh, married one very blonde, beautiful lady. And uh, he, uh, he celebrated his uh, marriage wedding in the Chateau de Versailles. Oh. Oh. Chateau de Versailles means Olympe. Yeah. Olympe. You know Olympe? Olympe. Olympus. Yeah. Olympus. Yeah. Olympus, the residence of God. The residence of God, the residence of Brahma. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, Versailles, he organized the wedding there mm. in Chateau de Versailles. How much it cost? No, no. Why? When you love, no, no, I, you know, you, what, you know, you spend any kind of amount, you know, it's nothing because it's for love. <laughs> but, you know, he paid, not, he didn't pay a single rupee. Because he organized through the government, the mayor of Paris and this kind of thing, how to get this free of cost. <laughs> free of cost. Free of cost. Not paying tax to the government for his, uh, you know, thing. And not paying tax for the Versailles. So they found that. And they started an inquiry against him. And then he was removed. Put in jail in France. No, he was first arrested in Japan. In Japan. Can you see? The revenge of the Japanese. You should not believe trust the Japanese. I told you, they are very dangerous. They will not show you anything, but they will arrange anything to kill you. They arrested him in Japan. Yeah? Put in jail. And then waiting for the trial to come. One year, nothing happened. Japanese procedure, it's worse than India. <laughs> so nothing is happening because you know you have to collect uh, data, evidence, you know, and this kind of thing. And Gosh, obviously, he was very angry against that. Angry, like Promete, he was very angry against just why he put me in this kind of thing. Ruse. What was the ruse? You know? What was the ruse? The trick. You know, you don't know? With some fellow Japanese traitors of Japan, but Japanese, mm -hmm. because they got some money. You know? Mm -hmm. I want to leave Japan because Japan is a prison. The whole Japan is a prison. They put me in prison. I am in prison. I have a very small freedom, but I am in prison. I cannot meet my wife, mm. you know? So I have to get out from this prison. So he found some French, Japanese, who helped them. He paid a lot of money. French people, mm. some gangsters, mm. not gangsters. Mm. So, you know, how he left Japan through flight, normal flight, mm. but he was in the luggage. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, in a box, in Pandora box. 
in Pandora box, no one should open the Pandora box. You know? Ghost is, uh, is hiding in the inside. You know? So this is how he left Japan. Where did he, where did he go? No, because in French they are worse than Japanese. He went to Lebanon. Unfortunately, this ghost, this ghost had, and he still has, French citizenship, American citizenship, obviously Japanese citizenship, but also, fortunately, Lebanese citizenship because his wife, you know, you know, women, babies, without babies you can do nothing. You know, at last, at last, to survive, he needed his wife. So he went to the country of his wife, Lebanon. And uh, with, between Lebanon and, uh, and America, Japan, and France, there is no collaboration in terms of extradition, you know, deporting and so <laughs> Now he's, he uses Fleurus like uh, Ulysse, like is it? So, and can you say that, you know, we have nothing to do with this epopee epics? No, we are living in that. And unfortunately, why we are not improving? Because we have not listened and we don't want to listen to that kind of experiences. So we are not listening, we have not listened to what the Mahabharata, what the Bhagavad Gita, what the Ulysse, what he told us, you know, in this way. So that's the problem, you know, linking the past and the, and the future. So after just two minutes, we have a break. Yeah. Do you allow me or no? Yeah, or uh, you want? I'm sorry because maybe you are angry, you know, or thirsty or something like that. But no, if you are not angry, angry, I don't, I don't mind. But, uh, <laughs> but. Uh, But uh, this is a... Uh, <laughs> absolutely, 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 la ruse. La ruse. So this is pronounced Z because uh, it's between uh, two vowels, two vowels, yeah? Ruse, la ruse. Uh, I should have some word is there, but... Uh, no? Sleep. Sleep. Ah, really? Ah, really? Very good. Oh, sorry. Ah, obviously. Like plotting or something. But it's not like, com it's some kind of intelligence, but it's uh, not intelligent. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's a kind of intelligence. Ruse. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, of, uh, no, Ghost, till today, is, uh, I think uh, no one can do anything against him because he's in Lebanon. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know. Uh, is he happy? I'm sure he has billions, but still. But, uh, you know, he's like, no, today, like, he, he's in jail, no? He's in Lebanon. Okay, he's enjoying his life. He's very rich. Uh, it seems that, uh, <laughs> you know, sometime back, you know, a few years back, you know, the Lebanon government asked him to do some consultancy for, uh, for, uh, for them. So it was a big mistake because all the government went bankrupt. <laughs> yes, yeah, you don't know that? Lebanon government has gone bankrupt. Not because of ghosts, just, uh, but uh, among different things, they asked him to advise them. And he was advising, you know, taking a lot of money from the government. He knew that the government is very poor, you know, and his wife from Lebanon, yeah, because he was charging a huge amount of money. I can tell you. And after a few years, all the government went bankrupt. And Macron, Macron, our president, you know, our hero, he was hero, yeah? hero, hero, no, 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 no doubt, hero. He immediately took a flight and go to Lebanon. What's happening here in Lebanon? I'm here to save Lebanon. So, okay, go all the government, go away. No, he did this, I'm joking, but it's true, no? It's true, this is exactly what happened, you know? Macron, our president, behaved like a hero, and maybe God, 
He immediately flew to Lebanon. Immediately. He said, oh, what's happening? Lebanon is going bankrupt? What is this? Okay, oh, go away from the government. I will be the government. I will tell you how to run the government and the society. And he stopped doing things. So he did that, you know, for some time. And he immediately understood that he could do nothing. So <laughs> he went back to France. So now he's sending some time. Time to time, he's sending some money, you know, trying to do it. Anyway, that's it. So for me, <coughs> so uh, this is uh, this this is the main thing. So I'd like to develop with you. Uh, the first thing is to understand, and I think that you must know the different things about this first part. Okay. So uh, epopee, uh, the epics. You know, if you take the epics from uh, the Gilmas and uh, from the German, from the Scandinavian. Uh, and uh, you know, the most known is the Greek. You know, why the most, now this is a question to you. Why do you think that the epics, the, the Greek epics are the most popular in the world? Yeah, the more than Bahamas. Uh, more, more why? Because uh, it was popular in Renaissance and uh, then the Western culture, you know, it kind of, uh, it, they, they became the dominant culture. And because it was the base of rational culture, basically. Any other point? Okay, yeah. Why the Greek uh, epopee, epics, are the most popular? Accepted and respected and uh, valued and... Uh, yeah, because of mutual content and complete understanding is accessible for mutual content. Secular. Any other point? So for instance, why the Egyptian is not known as uh, the Greek? And uh, you know, uh, after the Guerre de Troyes, many Greek went to, uh, to Egypt, no? And they settled there, yeah? they settled there. And they learned a lot of, uh, a lot of things there. And uh, many people say that, you know, most of the uh, Greek uh, gods became uh, Egyptian, was, uh, were Egyptianized, mm. you know? Through Osiris, Osis, and the different gods' names. But the same name, you know, Zeus became something, and uh, and, um, and uh, Aphrodite, and uh, all this kind. Still, the Greek remain, but the Egyptian not very famous. I mean, not known, uh, except uh, through uh, pyramid. But pyramid is something else. <laughs> it's something else. So. It had not this impact on the, yeah. Yeah. It had not impacted the, the, the world. Yes. Yes. You want to ask something? No, just a question. Yeah. The currency is better than acceptance and government. Uh, yeah, I will try to. Some people. Yes. The use, yeah. Of yeah. yeah. And true. the, the yeah. use of yeah. universal capitalism in, in Lebanon, which they to some people, you know, I'm posing yes. that if you have that, then mm -hmm. they open that, but some look at the potential. Yeah. 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 So this is, so th now, now we, uh, there is one uh, uh, assumption, assumption, very strong assumption. 
that uh, the Western uh, civilization is based on the Greek-Roman civilization. There is a continuity. So we belong, the Western people, we belong to the Greek-Roman uh, Greek and obviously Christian and to some extent Jews, because Jew and Christian link, something like that. So there is some, some kind of, a, you know, Phil uh, Darian, <laughs> you know, Phil Darian, Phil Darian, from, yeah, yes, coming from, uh, from there and linking, okay. linking, yeah, yes, linking, uh, linking thread, mm -hmm. linking thread, like developed by Ariane mm -hmm. to get out from the labyrinth. No, because the Greek civilization is a labyrinth. Especially the Greek civilization. The Greek civilization is resulting from multiple civilizations. Multiple. Even in Greece, what is called today Greece. At that time, it was not Greece. We had uh, Athena, Sparta, uh, we had Troy, uh, uh, Macedonia, and uh, different. Uh, yeah? And uh, there was a. Uh, a transformation system of the different cultures to become Greek one, you know, by linking, by negotiation. So you can see, for instance, you know, when Agamemnon, mm. he wanted to go to war, he wanted the, to, the support and the help of, uh, of uh, Sparta and, uh, mm. Spart and uh, yeah, to fight, you know, Troy. So, so even if his brother is there, the king, but uh, they are not really friends, you know? So you have to negotiate with them to fight Tawa. But Tawa belonged to Greece after some time, you know? Because it was included in the Greek, you know? Because the Greek became powerful, especially in the, in the sea. In the sea, they were not very good. And then they built this, uh, this uh, what do you call this? La flotte, the navy, you know? They, they built them. So, so since now we are powerful, okay, you can become our friends. Mm. Why? Because if not, you will be killed. Because we know that now we can kill you. Mm. We spent some time waiting that time to become powerful. Mm. But if you look at the Pericles, Pericles era, it was a very parenthesis, mm. brackets. Mm. Yes, yes, it didn't care. But still, it was the, the, the best, I think. Enlightenment, enlightenment period. Because, you know, but one more thing I think we can say, you know, so definitely, definitely, we should learn more about the Greek. Greek. They discovered everything. Alone? Not at all. No, they, for instance, you know, you know that, you know? So Alexandre III, Alexandre Le Grand, he traveled to India. He spent some time. He wanted to dominate India. But I don't know why he didn't like India. <laughs> so he didn't like, no, why he didn't like India? Because he didn't understand, he found that complexity. And uh, I don't know why. And because, you know, he could not also dominate. He could not dominate, but still, he asked someone to, to stay back there in India. What is that name? I forgot his name. Mergesni. Yeah. yeah, he was there yeah. as ambassador. Mm -hmm. He told him, no, something is important is happening here in this country. I am not able to understand, and I want to go back to Greece. But, you know, you should stay here and, you know, try to understand what's happening. Was it a spy or was it, I don't know. But it was uh, some kind of ambassador at that time. So links were there, links were there. Between the Arabs and the, in the India, before the Muslim invaders, yeah? Al Biruni, or many people, they wrote about, you know, India. So for instance, you know, many people, they, when they came for trade before, before the religious, you know, reasons, you know? Trade was developing at that time, but uh, many people understood the power of India. Indian economy, Indian philosophy. And this guy, he translated the, from the Sanskrit, many texts, Trans Sanskrit. Sanskrit was uh, translated in uh, Arabic, in Persian, in Persian. 
the Persian also relation between Greece and Persian, you know, Athena still fights against the Persian because the Persian, especially with the, what is his name? The latest one. Darius. Darius, thank you, Darius. Pronunciation is good. Your pro why your pronunciation is not good? Mine is better, no? <laughs> Darius, uh, Darius, Darius. You could fight Darius, you know? Yeah. So when you uh, win against Darius, then you become the, the, the king of the kings, you know, the emperor. So this is what happened. So, uh, so many Western people, they say, we belong to the Greek or Roman Christian. Okay, but to what extent is this uh, civilization, even the Greek civilization, powerful and prestigious, to what extent it was developed only by Greek and not by other people? I don't know. Very difficult. By Babylon, by the Phoenician, by uh, all these people, per Persian, the, per the Sumer. Etc. So this question, I think, is, but still, uh, the Greek, I'm very, very uh, uh, fond of the Greek because you know, they developed everything, you know? And uh, the gods, the gods of the Greek gods, like uh, the Indian gods and goddess, they are so beautiful. Even they are, they used to be warriors, they fighters, they fight, no? But you know, you know, beautiful people, you know? Beautiful people, smart people. They developed any kind, all the kind of area, in art, in music, in dance, in uh, everything. So the gods were human, and this is why today the human, and especially the Western human, would like to become a god. And since the French Revolution, there is no god. I am the god. You have not understood? I am the god. The reason, rationality, removed everything. Cannot you see the uh, development, the progress? But still today, at least, you know, but not only in Germany, but in France, for instance, all the Greek, you know, many people be became today in France, became expert in the Greek philosophy. Philosophy, philosophy. Everyone is a philosopher of the Greek. Everyone. You can talk about Aristotle, about uh, Platon, about uh, Pericles, about, uh, about, uh, about, uh, But one, uh, uh, I will give you some reference to one French, it's French. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not talking about German because German used to be much more powerful in the knowledge of the Greek than the French. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac Asimov, yeah. and, uh, uh, Goethe, and, uh, you know, Brecht, Schopenhauer, Nietzsche, yeah. all of them. And uh, someone like me also be translated, I don't know if he translated directly, but through one friend of mine, he can help us. So he uh, translated the, the Mahabharata and also the Upanishad, Upanishad, Upanishad. Um, uh, Nietzsche uh, knows very, very well the Upanishad. And some people say that, you know, one of the book, the famous book of Nietzsche, uh, the, monde, the Monde comme Représentation, outstanding book, he linked the Upanishad. Schopenhauer, 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 linked to the Upanishad, linked to the Upanishad. Really, one. This is the most profound wisdom he ever had. Ah, ah. He's very. No, no, but I think he, uh, he understood a lot of. Uh, okay. These are the, the most uh, powerful philosophers in the world. So there is one French I would like to. Uh, I, unfortunately, two, three years back, he died also, but he criticized this, uh, this philosophical uh, mania. You know, mania? Mania. Yeah. His name was his, uh, Adu. Adu. Les experiences, the experiences in philosophy. He said that you know many people are talking about the Greek philosophy, but they know nothing about the Greek philosophy. You know, one of the things developed by the Greek was rhetoric. You know, the rhetoric. There was a department of rhetoric, very powerful. From that uh, Greek knowledge, rhetoric. Now we develop through Hermes. You know. La communication, communication, how to speak to audience, how to, uh, this is the rhetoric. 
And the leaders now are very good in rhetoric. Mm -hmm. Rhetoric now is saying something, but don't believe what you are saying. But you have to become expert in how to say things to any kind of audience. Be accepted, respected, valued, and you know nothing about them. So many people are talking about Aristotle, about uh, Platon, about uh, Heracles, about uh, different, but they know nothing about them. Because if you dig a little bit, and you know that some, for instance, some saying in the, the Greek philosophy, uh, Toi toi -même. Know yourself yourself by yourself. Mm. The inner side of knowledge. Which is completely, completely forgotten today in the Western world. Mm. People, they talk about everything except about themselves. Mm. But they know nothing about themselves. And this is why they are still in the rhetoric. Mm. The rhetoric. The superficial the visible knowledge of how to, how to talk feeling messages to all people, even if you believe nothing about what you are talking about. But it should be very powerful to convince others. And people will think that, oh, he is expert in this. But if you dig, nothing is there. Because they don't have experienced the philosophy. If you want to experience the philosophy, you have to become Buddha. Or Socrates. But Socrates was killed because he was considered as a danger for the society. Because he was weakening the minds of people. And this today is not accepted. You should... Uh, put people in some kind of darkness. So you can lead them easily. But don't, don't open the Pandora. Because you can see few people, young people, youngsters, drug people, drug, you know, voyou, you know, these people, delinquent, you know, delinquent, you know, delinquent means, what do you call it? Delinquent, something like that. You know? So they have to be treated as such, put in jail. Because if you open the Pandora of these people, plenty of things will come out. Requirements, demanding, expectations, and we are not able to fulfill that. So you have to maintain these young people. You are young. Shut your mouth. See? Shut your mouth. You have nothing to, you cannot impact what's happening today. You have to listen. You have to be maintained in that thing. Because the Pandora, you open the Pandora, this guy must know more than and better than you. Mm. So, and then he will take your place. No, this is not acceptable. Like in the mm. Iliad and Odyssey. Like in the o Iliad and Odyssey. Mm. When a god learned that someone would like, you know, then immediately he came. So, this is. So, what I am developing, so we can stop here and then, uh, but. Uh, so let me just uh, very briefly give you, maybe you can work on that, so can we, can, uh, we can interact a little bit better. You can see, so, <coughs> okay, this epopee and different things I have here you can, that can help, you know, a little bit. Epopee, so I, I am interested to know how the values of people the behaviors of people change through the centuries, through even through, you know, long time, long time, you know? So this is the, the oldest period of time. The, but, you know, if you look at epopee, that some you know, describing the gods, super power, you know, heroes, you know, this, okay, we know, you have to read, you know, the different, you know, I will give you some examples, you know, what should be known, you know? But, you know, as I told you, if you know very well, very well, not superficially, uh, Odyssey and Iliad, and the Metamorphose uh, coming later, you know, of Ovid, etc. But first, epopee of Odyssey and Iliad. Mm -hmm. And, okay, I'm not interested in the different gods, but some gods are powerful. You have to know. Why you have to know the gods? 
who were at that time powerful because, because behind them there was this kind of message. What kind of values and les mœurs? How would you say mœurs? Les mœurs. Les mœurs. Les, ouais, les traditions. Les mœurs means customs, uh, customs like customs. Yeah. So how did the, the first gods, you know, the behavior of the gods, even using the ruse, ruse and tricks and this power, using conflicts, within some kind of killing, that's okay. But how that was, in, the purpose was to impact the values of the society and the tradition, the customs in the society. And do you think that, you know, after that, you know, some change happened or not? It means, obviously, today, when we talk about change today, obviously, we will talk about resistance to change. So I am the God, Zeus, even Zeus, everyone knows that he is the God of the gods. Mm. Okay? So you have to listen, you have to respect and follow what he said. But some people were against him. Mm. Even his brother and sons and daughters. So they, they developed some rules against him. So there was some kind of resistance. So he wanted to do some, introduce some change, but he, these people disagree. So I want you to understand what kind of a conflict raised between the values as Zeus was developing and the resistance coming from some of his, his brothers. I think uh, like Kronos or some, no, resisted. And also some sons and uh, daughters resisted. And how did they resist? to his, uh, to his, uh, yeah, rules, to his uh, uh, domination. Yeah, to rules, exactly. So this is the first point. Then the second, I'd like to know, so, epopée, transformation, nation. So this is in the society itself, the behavior of people. I would say, for instance, in India, we have used in the book, tomorrow I will show you the book. So to, uh, uh, to introduce this, what we call this uh, inclusive transformation, yeah? We have two sides. We have the institutional organization level mm. and we have the personal level. Mm. So in India, we have used, in the book, we have used the example of uh, Ashoka, Arthashastra. Mm. Arthashastra? Arthashastra. <coughs> we have developed because Arthashastra, Ashoka uh, was interested in the institutional change, including leadership, but at the highest level. Institutional means what kind of institution should be designed and implemented that would help the changes. So how to move from the, 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 the previous empire, dynasty, to the new one? How to shift? You know, how to shift? To stop the decline, because it was a declining at that time, it was the civilization of Morian, Morian, the Morian, Morian Empire. So how to, how to stop the decline and renaissance? Centuries before the French came, you know, <laughs> renaissance. Okay. So this is the first thing, Arthashastra. We're focusing on that. And the second one we, we used also, because I was in uh, Tamil Nadu at that time. Mm. So, Kerukuru. 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 Tamil. Tamil, yes. philosopher or uh, ethical, I don't know. He was a Jain, or I don't know. But this one also was interested on the personal level. If uh, personal transformation does not happen, nothing will happen. Very powerful. Isn't it powerful? So today, you have the best democracy in the world, the best institu institutions, the best... Uh, uh, the best government, the best uh, department of things, but uh, at the personal level, nothing is happening. So nothing will happen through the institutional level. And this is why we have uh, the coup. Coup, you know, coup d'état. <laughs> coup coup d'état. You know coup d'état? Yes. What is coup d'état? Coup d'état, a ruler, removal of a ruler. Which is very coup. Yeah. This is what's happening everywhere in the world. But at the organization level, coup d'etat, 
the Japanese CEO removed Ghost, and after Ghost, he was removed by another one, and after another one removed him. This could it happen? Could it happen? Why? Because at the personal level, nothing happened, including the CEO himself. Because our ghost, he thought, he was convinced that he, he was the God. Because we in the West, we believe, we believe in nothing. Because we are the God. Can you see? We removed God, we replaced them. Very simple. And this, this is the second point. So, and if you look at uh, what's happening, so this is the beauty of, uh, it's not smart. <laughs> not smart. <laughs> I didn't think that I was smarter than the. <laughs> so the epopoeia transformation. No. Now we have this, uh, I think you have heard of this, the shock of civilization. Have you heard of this? The shock, the civilization. The clash of civilization. You have heard of that, no? Good book, yeah? Everyone today is against him, but I am sure that most people who were against this uh, Antikton, they didn't read the book. <laughs> you know? So they just uh, took some a few things, superficial, and said, oh, what is this? He was against Muslims. What is this? Bullshit. Read the book and then talk about him, about this guy. So there is the... Uh, from the, the beginning, you know, from the Greek and the, you know, before the Romans, Sumerian and this kind, exchange it was there. Exchange it was there. So how this epopee contributed to not only the transnational transformation, but also at the civilization level. At that time, we you know, no clash of civilization. We fight, yes. We fight. Fighting got there. But then people will become friends. And then they build some new things. And uh, done. No domination, no, no, sus not sustainable domination. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, sometimes in the Greece or slaves were there, no. But they immediately they understood that it's not a good thing. Eh? The impact on values. Mm. No, slaves were there. People were not allowed to vote. Mm. Then they were allowed to vote. Mm. So work on yourself. Work on yourself. Understand yourself. Mm. Is it acceptable to? Uh, I mean to enslave people? Mm. No. So this is why it has impacted the civilization, because they, thanks to the Greek philosophers, especially the Socrates, Socrates, he understood that, you know, no. You cannot be free if other people are not free as slaves. Simple. So that was the contribution. From that, you know, uh, they contributed to the change and to the exchange, the interaction between, not only within the society, but also with, between the civilization, between the two. And the third one, I, I give a lot of importance to the third one. So instead of uh, changing the, uh, the civilization, putting together civilization. <coughs> Today you can see there was some people, but only at the religious, religious level. They talk about uh, the dialogue of religions today. Yeah. They're all the time talking about dialogue, but no dialogue is happening. Mm. They're still fighting, mm. still fighting, you know? And the dialogue started uh, many years back from the Greek, but you know, in the Indian, you know, Vivekananda in 18th century, he went to Chicago and then talk about the dialogue of civilization. Mm. And he was not accepted as a religion mm. in the beginning. Because Hinduism is not supposed to be a religion. But you have nothing to do with us. The real religion are the three monotheists. Three monotheists. Monotheism, by the way, you can see. Monotheism. Monotheism. What does it mean? Monotheism. Jew, Christian, Muslim. Yeah? Everyone thinks that he is the best. Despite the linkage between them, they have the same God. But everyone thinks that he is the best. And monolith monolithism means excluding others. Mono. 
You have to be with us. Otherwise, you are not with us. So there is some kind of separation it's needed. You know? Monotheism, mono, monoculture, mono single culture, white culture, you are black. Oh, Indian, you are not black, not white. What is this? Excluded. Because we don't understand who you are, you know? We understand white, but black, okay, we know that they are slaves. But between the, these two, uh, nothing is, nothing should be there. You are not a part of what, you know? <laughs> so this is mono, this is the mono, yeah? Mono, mono. Mono, mono, mono mind thinking, mono thinking, single mind, single minded, narrow, same thing, single minded. We want to do things, these are the things. Oh, some people would like something different, change. No, 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 we don't accept. We are in the single mono trend, strategy. So the same principle is there, the same kind of thing. So the monotheism. And th th this, uh, in the, the last session, we will develop this because the, the next book will be about this. This way. Instead of, we have Western civilization, the Eastern, to simplify. Many other civilizations are there. Eh? I'm interested in the people, people without writing, without writing. <coughs> They have no writing. Oral people. What about these oral people? No, 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 no. No, not accepted. Because we don't understand what they are talking about. It's not written. <laughs> it is basically. Yeah? If it's not written, it will not be digitalized. So it will not be a part of the civilization. This is the danger of some people. You are excluding people for bullshit reason. Bullshit. Tribes. Fortunately, tribes are here in India. Yeah. But to what extent they are part of uh, the civilization? I don't know. Yeah. Because they don't write. Uh, same thing, so, some time back, you know, the Indian languages, not written very explicitly, not, ex not included, yeah. not, include, not considered as languages. So uh, we can suppose that they are dialects, dialects, yeah, oral things, but not considered. It's not prestigious, you know? So. Latin America, for instance, not a place. Latin America. Many people, they don't have uh, writing things, you know? I mean, at least uh, the past, you know? They have not written things. Because what we call the oral civilization. But you know, the Greek was oral be before <laughs> being written, yeah? The Christian was oral be before, uh, you know, the Muslim, Muslim were oral be before uh, writing, you know? So I think, and the writing uh, should be questioned also, you know? Who writes uh, what? To do what? For what purpose? So this uh, here, I'd like to, to, to show how we have to converge. We have to converge. For instance, ethical part of uh, the Greek civilization is in the Dharma, is in the Dharma. So why don't we put Dharma and ethics together? We can, no? Because we are interested in ethics. Yeah, ethic is dharma, but dharma is maybe beyond the ethic, but still, this, we can, we, through this, we, we can find the, the common characteristics of the both civilizations. But what happened? The Western civilization forgot itself as a civilization because of the exclusion and the breaking process. So the Western civilization broke itself broke itself and remove <coughs> great part of itself. So this has to be included. Because now many people are trying to include that. Oh, we are uh, the Western civilization. What does it mean? So they develop racism, you know, exclusion of others, you know, immigrant and this kind of thing. What is happening? So this is not, uh, this is not the only part of Western civilization. So if you don't do this work, the, this work will be done by other with, uh, with, uh, with closed, uh, with uh, not closed, but with hidden purposes, mm -hmm. political purposes. We are not uh, in interested in political or ide ideological purposes. We are interested in a human per per perspective, a human perspective. If you look at what happening everywhere in the world, people are looking for the same things, mm -hmm. but 
since no one is uh, getting closer to them, so other people, you know, they claim themselves representing them, and then they they take all the place. But these people, definitely, they have some political and ideological perspectives. Perspectives. It's not for the happiness of people, but you know, we can say it's the happiness maybe for these people who are doing these things, but not the people they are supposed to work for. So uh, this is the purpose of this uh, lecture. So I'll give you some details at the last uh, session. So on remplace Dieu, on remplace Dieu, huh? man, man they replaced gods, okay? So now, so he opened the Pandora box, so now he is facing a lot of uh, calamities, suffering, etc. So the purpose is how to overcome it. Mm. So how to overcome it, my friends? So putting, you know, Indian civilization, Upanishad, uh, Bhagavad Gita, and uh, Western civilization in its entire, you know, uh, perspective can help. But when I'm, I, you can, you, you may think, you know, Madin, you are reducing because what about China, Aztec, etc. That's true. But this is what I, I think, because in my opinion, you know, that's what you, you can argue that. Uh, so, Western civilization, we belong to the Greek, Roman, and Christian, etc. Okay? That's okay. But now, in, you look at the West, but nothing is remaining from that. Great civilization. What is the great civilization? Disappeared. It's in a museum. It is in museum. Or you have to go to Greece, Crete, to Crete, Delphi, etc. Oh, oh, the moon. Oh, this is Olympia, Olympia. Oh, this is museum. Museum in the open sky. Okay. Roman museum. You go to Italy. Is there any Roman uh, Roman philosophy there? Nothing. Italian is there, you know. Mafia is there. <laughs> Mafia maybe. You know, mafia is there, you know. So if you go to America, what is happening? You have uh, Biden versus Trump. That's <laughs> versus Trump, that's what's the perspective of American people, you know. In France, we have Macron. Macron and against Macron, nothing. The cow, cow, Mr. Cow will come back. You know? <laughs> the God cow will come back to save French people, you know, because Ma Macron is doing a lot of mistakes against God's so. Because he thinks he is God. That's a problem. That's, he replaced God and he thinks that he is behaving like a God. Oh, and he is not a God. So these are the points we would like to do. So for tomorrow, maybe, maybe to, because, you know, we'd like to develop a little bit about, you can, you can go through, yeah, read by yourself. So this uh, famous epopee, famous epics, yeah? So, Odyssey, Iliad, but uh, I mean, okay, you can, we can read, tomorrow I will show you some uh, video because I don't have time. Tomorrow I should do some video reading, you know, reading, reading and, uh, uh, and uh, you have to, you have to, you have to understand, you know, as I told you, the values and the customs behind. It's fight, no, how, it is, no, Agamemnon, no, no, Elan, no, Athena. Beautiful, beautiful stories, stories. Yeah, they, they meet with histoire, beautiful stories. But uh, be, beyond that and behind, what are the values? What are behind the values? What kind of values developed by Zeus when he got in conflict against uh, Athena and Iris and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Aphrodite, Aphrodite? So this is, the, if you can read this tomorrow and uh, take this kind of uh, values and Customs just wanted to be implemented, and he was resisted. Mm. By whom and why? So this is the point. And the second, we will uh, maybe you can. I don't know if you can go in depth. Maybe what I don't know what your knowledge in that. So it's interesting to compare to some of the Vilmas and then uh, and then Mahabharata and that. Mm. We can do that. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. So because German, <coughs> Germanic also. So it's very known, it's a, but uh, forgotten. Yeah, I'm Israeli. <laughs> well, you are from the Eastern? I'm from Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. 
So you can tell it about the work of Russian, Saudi Arabia, or Russian, Russian and Saudi are very close. No? You see the trends. I like the name of this institution. Yeah. Do you have any question before? Uh, because if you have no question, we will spend more time, you know, because we have not understood. So you, Some you questions. You said that, uh, yeah. you know, the, in, the modern, in, in modernity or modern, in the modern world, people have become barbaric. Okay. Yes, absolutely. But isn't that the nature of modern world? Barbaric. Because in modern means it is in constant change. So there is in, in one part you can uh, play drama, <coughs> the yes. limit, where the limit are placed. And one place where you can play Buddha, where if the emotions are the product, then Buddha, he rejected the whole consumer process. <coughs> you see? So if, if, if man, you know, if human tries to get nirvana, he has to reject the market. And if not, he has to be, uh, if he likes, he has to be within the limit. The limit <coughs> part is always will be a place of conflict and barbarism. <coughs> no, you have the Buddha process, for instance, no? getting rid of everything and then uh, starting some new thing. I'd like to know by myself <coughs> what's happening, you know? So if you want to know, then if you want to know something, you know, so you have to, uh, to uh, uh, you, have, you have to get rid of some of the habits. Because the habits, uh, same thing, some traditions could be some barriers to the knowledge. The, you know, the habit, for instance, I, I, am, uh, I was born in a castle, you know, and uh, I'm getting the values of my father, my ancestors. All of them, you know, used to live in a castle, king or something like that, you know. So this kind of living is still there. Today we have rich people, rich people in France, Champs Elysees behind the Luxembourg thing. Some places you cannot get there because yeah, it's very expensive. You can you can go and visit and go, oh, 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 impressed, but but still you cannot get in, you know. So closed closed places, closed classes, okay? So this uh, kind of things are becoming barriers to understanding what's happening in the society. Because the society is made of kings, yeah, nobles, but it's also made of old people. And you know, if you look at quantitatively, you know, the number of kings or uh, rich people, uh, it's minority, it's not the majority, no? Majority is uh, poor people, they get you no know, every month. They are waiting with a salary, <laughs> you know, poor people. So, this is why you have to get out of these obstacles to understand what's happening in the world. And this is extremely difficult. Extremely. Can you can you get rid of your comfort? It's extremely difficult. But so this convergence of civilization doesn't mean that you know you are rich. You have to become uh, poor to understand. No, it's not that. You are rich, you can enjoy your uh, wealth or something like that. So this is very interesting. If you look at uh, the Indian, they have this uh, four things. Interesting, you can find the balance bet between them. We have the, the, the Arta, the Arta, some wealth, yeah? Okay. Rich, some wealth, prosperity. And you have the Kama, Kama, enjoying the wealth, Kama, pleasures, etc. So the Greek are very powerful in that. Powerful, very, very powerful. Everything is with the Greek in the Kama. Then you have to control this Kama. This is contro controlling doesn't mean getting rid of, no, I have to become poor. No, 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 it's not. This is not the idea of Buddha himself. He didn't want to become poor. He wanted to understand what's happening. To learn by himself, to discover the world and to include the world in his perspective. But before that, he should attain some level of understanding. This is the enlightenment. This is enlightenment. So uh, this, this is the thing, you know, you should not uh, understand that in the negative way. You know, I, you know, so my question was, mm. I, I'm not saying uh, rejecting, uh, you know, the, the uh, how to say, the comfort. Buddha is not rejecting the comfort. No. Yeah, but uh, okay, so if you if you implement that, 
that is one part but the modernity will never allow for that implementation no, that's definitely they, they want to look. But you know, they, uh, I, I responding, I understand that point. Uh, I agree with that to some, to some extent. So there is one uh, um, some example said by uh, Gramsci. Gramsci, I don't know if you have heard of Gramsci. You know, we are talking about Buddha, you know, nothing to do with Buddha and Gramsci, you know, but still, a lot of common things are there between them. And definitely, uh, Gramsci can be Buddha and Buddha can be Brahmins. I'm just giving the direction to some extent. So Gramsci said, you know, so there is one dominant, one dominant system that he was dominating. For instance, man was dominating women for centuries, for years, for hundred years, thousand years, and he's still dominating to some extent. But a lot of change happened. Yes, a lot of change happened. So you 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 like it or dislike it? This happened. How? We can discuss how. Fighting, you know, resisting, different things. Okay? So, what I'm saying that, you know, you can, uh, you, you can introduce some changes, you know, that uh, can help people understand by themselves. So, today the Western model is dominating. But this domination, I think, domination. But this domination has been justified and we can explain why I am a slave and to some extent I accepted to become a slave. Of what? Not of someone, but it's like no slavery today. But slave of the conception society. The conception society, you like it or not, developed by some kind of the Western model. This Western powers, Western powers, excluded the Western civilization itself to dominate through some new modern things, what we call the modernism, this uh, reason, rationality, the material progress, the progress, the progress. Everyone want to be, to, to improve, to have progress, material progress, to live, everyone want to do that. So, and he said, Gramsci said, this system is dominating, has been dominating, it has reached a very high level, very high development, material development. No doubt about that. Mm. In different areas, medical area, science, mathematics, understanding, understanding what's happening in the sky, what's happening in the world. Mm. Yeah, this is why they think they have become gods. Mm. You understand? But now, this model, this system is facing a lot of challenges. So, to face the challenges, can you imagine? This is an example. Our Macron has to become a dictator sometime. A dictator to maintain the order. Otherwise, the cow, Mr. Cow, will come back. But the cow is there, but it's hidden. Gramsci said if you do that, if you maintain the system which is going bankrupt, no. It's maintaining itself because it's very powerful, maintaining itself, but the hidden part is, uh, is in danger and is resisting. And if you don't allow, if you don't allow the hidden part of the society, the emerging expectations, okay? It's like the grid, you know? Then we will have the monster, the Pandora box. You like it or not, will be open bar, what, whatever the, the, the hands. Some people will, will open the Pandora box, and this is, for instance, in France, you know, we have uh, now strikes, we have, uh, we have uh, riots, we have sometimes it, and the, the de we are a democratic country. We are very powerful democracy. So sometimes, you know, we are becoming, you know, dictatorship. Dictatorship, and everywhere the same thing. So this helps maintain the system, but to what, I mean, what would be the, what would be the, uh, the perspective of that? Mm. So Gramsci said, if you do nothing to help the emerging power, the emerging expectations to become visible and to have that say, to help you improve your system, so this uh, emerging will become some kind of monsters. Mm. 
and they will come from out of the Pandora box. The Pandora box. And you know, this is the, this exactly what's happening. But uh, but fortunately, you know, this is in the Greek. You know, the Pandora. You know that. You know, in the box. In the box. So open all the monsters. It were monsters. They were monsters. No. Now we are leaving the quantum confusion. Then. No. But still, in in the in the bottom, in the bottom, there was one uh, thing which was not which it didn't you did it, uh, it didn't go out of the box. You know that. You know. So the monster was coming out, coming out from the box. You know, the monsters, this, 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 everything, suffering. Except one small thing remained there, so small, it could not get out. That was the hope. So, okay, I'm looking what's happening, but I'm not able to get out. I'm waiting. So the hope is there. Any other questions to uh, to stop, or uh, we can uh, tomorrow? Okay. You can uh, prepare your questions. Yeah, prepare questions and prepare understanding the two at least the two epics. But you know, as I told you, okay, you can learn by heart some of the if you. If you are uh, interested in some of the, you know, one of the things, you know, you can, po poems, poem, one of the poem, you can say one of the poem. Otherwise, look at the values and the thing, you know, the customs behind and the resisting. Who is resisting? Why? So this is a beautiful thing of the Greek epics. And also, we will see with the Mahabharata, the epics, the same thing. People resisting and why they're resisting it. So thank you so much for your patience. Merci beaucoup. À demain. À demain. It's not German demain. Demain means tomorrow. Morgen. Bis morgen. Bis morgen. Namaste. And vanakam. Vanakam. Okay, thank you so much.